So my third devotion on, so it's Passover. We're a week past it. The normal festivities we would have had and the normal celebrations were not possible. Most lands throughout the world, most churches were either closed or had very small numbers in attendance, as here in Mexico as well. So I've spoken on the Passover and connected it, as it should be, to the cross and the memory of the cross through communion. I asked us to consider two essential effects of the Passover. Firstly, that the Passover should lead us to reverence of Christ. And the Passover uh, calls us in response to faith. If you know anything about the history of the nation of Israel, then you know that the event described in Exodus 12 was monumental to their history, so much so that they were instructed uh, to formulate their calendars based on this incredible and monumental event of being delivered from Egypt. Exodus 12, 1 and 2. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, in the land of Egypt. This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. This event was so monumental in their history that there was a sense in which it marked not only a new beginning uh, of the nation, but as I mentioned before, a new beginning spiritually and religiously, and, and a new beginning socially. Commentators often refer to this event as the birth of the Israelites as a nation. Even uh, time would be calculated based on this event uh, going forward. Could you not say that the same thing holds true regarding the conversion of every sinner? When you talk to any Christian, especially those who were saved a little later in their years, I ask them, what was the most momentous event in your life? And they will inevitably answer that the most momentous event in their lives was when they came to Christ. Like Israel, it is where we gain our identity, not a nationality. It is where we gain uh, a new sense of our lives. We have, for instance, the beginning of our life in the kingdom. But it is also an identity on a road to sanctification. So the third point I wanted to speak about was the Passover lamb, unspotted and pure, calls us to a life of godliness. That identity is fully exposed in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Conversion marks a new beginning in the life of the Christian. There's a sense in which life really didn't begin and has of or lesser consequence uh, until that day of conversion came when life took on new meaning. On that day there was a lifting of the burden of guilt. There was a newfound peace. There was a new sense of purpose and meaning to life. Your soul was flooded with peace and joy. It marked a new beginning to your life every bit as much as the deliverance from Egypt marked the new beginning of the lives of the Israelites. I think it's completely suitable to reflect on the day of our salvation just as Israel reflected on the Passover, the day of their deliverance. So we should ha have as much importance placed upon that day when we were delivered. And we do so by calling to mind that the day you came to Christ had an impact on your life. It's a day of testimony. It's a day of new beginnings. It's a day of independence for you. You changed your status from a citizen of this world to a citizen of the kingdom. Indeed, we need to call it to mind with hope in a specific way that the same vitality that marked that day would be resurgent in us 
in this present day as well. For we know full well that with the passing of time, we tend to take our blessings for granted. It's a mark of the strength of our depravity that we reach points in our walk with the Lord where we slip back, where things that were once glorious, when things that once thrilled our souls no longer impact us in the same way any longer. I believe that is one of the reasons why the Lord ordained this remembrance feast of the Lord's table of communion to us so that we might be called to think upon and remember who Christ is and what he has done for us and how he has set us free. This remembrance of Christ is designed to keep us on the path of godliness, to keep us in pursuit of holiness and to keep us committed to serving Christ. By way of contrast, it also is designed to remind us that we've left Egypt, spiritually speaking. Notice from, me verse, uh, from verse 11, uh, the manner in which the Israelites were to eat the Passover. Exodus 12, 11. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. You know the story well. Once the angel of death passed through the land and took the life of the firstborn in every house not marked with the blood, the Egyptians not only allowed the Israelites to leave, but they admonished them to leave, and quickly. They were to be uh, remembered for the fact that in the taking of the Passover, they were ready, loins girded, their shoes shod, their staffs in their hands, ready to leave. So we in like manner should be ready to leave the world. And the Lord's table reminds us that we should always be ready to turn our back on the things of the world. Quickly, with staff in hand, our shoes shod and our loins girded. We have left spiritual Egypt. We have announced it as it were. That this world is no longer our home. This world is no longer our place of allegiance. This world is no longer the place of our focus and our affections. This world rather is marked for judgment and its passing will come and it will soon pass away. Oh, the Lord's Supper, like the Passover feast, serves to convey that message to us. And oh, how we need to... Uh, we have this constant reminder. We're not to love this world nor the things of the world. We're to remember that we've been saved from the present evil world. Galatians 1.4 If you know the history of the Israelites, then you know how often they longed to return to Egypt. They seemed to forget their bondage. They forgot that they were slaves. They forgot that their own children were targets for destruction. We may look at them and wonder how they forgot. But let's not be astonished. And let's not be at least a little bit bewildered. Because we so much resemble Israel longing for the things of this world. So Passover connected Israel to the constant reminder of their freedom from the slavery of Egypt. In the same way, the Lord's table is a reminder that we have been delivered from the bondage of this world and slavery to sin. And so I trust that the impact of this ancient feast of Passover and the modern understanding of Passover at the cross and its continued reminder through the Lord's table would be a time where we not only reflect upon our leaving Egypt, are leaving this world, but that we would use it as a time to collaborate, as it were, and celebrate the resurrection, proclaiming that we were dead in slavery and sin, but now we too are risen with life eternal. 
the feast is too rich in its typical significance to miss Christ. We are, in the words of the scripture, to behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And we're to appropriate by faith the value and the virtue of his broken body and his shed blood in the same way we did when we were initially saved. So let's be mindful of what we've been saved from and what we've been saved to. We've been saved from this present evil world, but we have been saved to godly lives, to strive to honor Christ, to reflect Christ in our lives. So many, uh, may we enjoy Passover in the future and reflect that this Passover be burned into our conscience as we remember Christ and look forward to the next opportunity to gather around the Lord's table. May Passover be a strong reminder and connect us to the Lord's table, which is not only called to be a reminder, but to call to be a reflection of our faith in worship services, to declare to all the world and to those around us, we are the resurrection. We have been delivered from death and the slavery and bondage of this world. So let's reflect on Passover and connect it to the Lord's table when we meet again round the Lord's table. Amen.